Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, uh, any fancy new home, car, job, or any other supernatural or material gift that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are here in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the ones watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open up to, uh, let's go ahead and open up to, uh, let's do John chapter, uh, John chapter 6, verse 40, 42. Uh, I um, gave one of my coworkers our website, mm -hmm. and she was like, where, dude, where that, was that you yelling at your kids? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. I was yelling at my kids. Like, yeah, they ain't raw around here. <laughs> Man, you probably expected like some professional super. Oh, yeah, my kids. Let's tell them to that. Family. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. We family. That thing ain't real. You know what I'm saying? When you little rascal run around here, they might get it. <laughs> yeah, but I have to stop the video. Hold on real quick. <laughs> Lord be with us in a second. <laughs> This is uh, John chapter 6, verse 42. John chapter 6, verse 42. You have a book? <clears throat> yeah, this one. Which one you want? This one over there. There you are. It's John chapter 6, verse 42. This is the book. And they said, is not this Yahushua, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? Right. They look at him. They look at Yahushua. They say, and we say Yahushua. And it's written in the book that we're reading from. It say Jesus. Right. But because we know, um, we're actually doing a video on this right now that we're about to uh, go ahead and set out. I have to finish editing it. But uh, we know that, that the Jesus had the same name as Joshua in the Old Testament. Right. And Joshua in the Old Testament, we pronounce it Joshua because it started with a J, right? That's how we pronounce it in English. But in Old English, the J sound didn't have the J sound like we have today, right? The J, so the history of the letter J, it actually developed from the letter I. That's why the lowercase J looked like an I with a little hook at the bottom because it developed from the letter I, right? So if you were to look at the first printed King James Bible, what you would see is Jesus spelled I-E, right? S-U-S. All right? But how you pronounce that it would be Jesus, just like the rapper. Right? He was a Jesus. That's how you pronounce it, because that's how it was pronounced. And the reason why it was pronounced that way is because it was transliterated into English from Greek. Right? And in Greek, it was similar. The way you would pronounce that, they didn't have a Y sound. Right? And they didn't have a J sound. They would pronounce it Isus. Right? Isus in Greek. And that was the reason why you got that in Greek, because it was translated from Hebrew. Right? And so in Hebrew, it was Yahushua. But in Greek, they don't have a Y sound, so you can't make that Yah. Right? And they also don't have the SH sound. Right? So you couldn't make the Sh. And then they have other little rules, kind of like, you know, Spanish, like you have a masculine name, and it has to end in this, and that, and that. So it's kind of like that. They have other little rules. So it minimized Yahushua down to e -sus, Right? Then you take e -sus, translate that into English. Now it's e -sus. Right? Then the J develops the sound that we know of today. So when we read it, it says Jesus to us. All right? So that's how it gets that. So when we call him, we just call him by the historical name, Yahushua, in Hebrew. Same name that, that Joshua would have. The reason why Joshua is different, because when you translate Joshua, I mean, you translate Yahushua directly from Hebrew into English, you get Joshua. It's closer, right? It's closer to what it actually was, because it's just going directly from Hebrew right to English. When you go through a middleman, you go to English to, to Greek, then to English, 
then it gets changed a little bit. It's like it's like trying to put what's something the kids understand nowadays. It's like trying to put it's like trying to put two different Snapchat filters on a picture. You know what I'm saying? You look at it, you got one filter that thing make it all black and white. Then after it's black and white, you're like, mm, no, I want the one to make it bright. Well, now you're going to have a bright black and white picture, right? Because it's already made black and white. Meanwhile, if you take that same picture, skip the black and white, and just make it bright, it'll be what you was looking for, right? So you just have two different filters going through it, which is distorted in a certain way. And it was appropriate for what you originally wanted, but once you put that second filter on there, now it's just like, eh, you kind of lose where it originally came from, right? So that's what we try to do is try to get back to as close as possible, not just names and all that, especially the Messiah's name, but everything that we look at, we want to try to get back to as close as possible. How was it taught? All right? What did they? What? What? What were we? What were we taught as a people? What was the culture as our people? That way, when we look at stuff and we understand stuff, we have to understand this is how God wanted us to understand it. Right? Now, if we make a mess of it from there, that's on us. But at least we made a mess of it for years now. Years stuff has been made a mess. You got Catholics made a mess of some stuff. Every every little denomination that we got now in the Christian religion. Everything got where it come from. Catholic. You can't get you. How you gonna trace what what religion you gonna trace back past Catholics? No matter how you do it, that thing gonna trace back to being a Catholic. At some point, somebody who, who was a part of your religion came from Catholicism, and it was messed up from Catholicism. So now we have to look at it and say, do we just trust that this is all good, right? What do we keep? What do we throw out? Let's throw it all out and let's just start reading the book. Let's throw everything out. Let's just say, I don't like none of it. And let's look at the book and let's say exactly what it say. That's the truth. All right? That's how we get to it. And that's it. We just have to go all the way back. We start with just his name. All right? I ain't saying call everybody name. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure out everybody's name when, when, when the Most High God come back and teach us, how to, uh, uh, teach us Hebrew. All right? We don't necessarily want to learn Hebrew from, you know, all these people. All right? Because you have people that stole our culture, stole our language, stole our stuff, and then taught it back to us. All right? And then they want to, then you have our people, once they learn Hebrew from, from, from these people, they'll come back and be like, y'all don't even know Hebrew. You're like, you, you might not know Hebrew. You don't know what you darn speaking. These people, how long has it been since we've been in our land? Almost 2,000 years. So you mean to tell me we ain't been in our land for almost 2,000 years, right? You got these other people who they even acknowledge they wasn't the original people in the land, right? So you got these other people that's there. Somehow they know Hebrew. You haven't been there for 2,000 years, but when they teach you Hebrew, you rock with it. I don't know. Don't make sense to me. I'll go ahead and read in English. You know what I'm saying? We'll get that thing together. You know what I'm saying? You think I got something wrong from the English, you go ahead and show it to me, prove it out. We'll, I'll change. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I ain't against changing. I ain't against being corrected. I'm just saying I'm not rocking with somebody telling me a Hebrew and they can't prove where they got that. I need you to trace that thing back to somewhere. Trace it back to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me how original Hebrew... From the time before Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, before we got kicked out of our land or before our lineage got stopped, you know what I'm saying, trace it back to that time, then I'll rock with you. If you can't do that, mm, I'll wait. You know what I'm saying? Give me uh, give me Zephaniah. What I want? Zephaniah too? Ah, oh, you might have to work with me. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm a... Uh, what I want? Zephaniah too? What do you say? Uh, Pure language. Pure that. tongue, maybe? I want to say Zephaniah, give me Zephaniah 2, and I'm going to take a chance at this one. Zephaniah 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 9. Let's do Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 9. Let's just see what I get. It might be 14 what I want. Tony, let me know if you get it before you get it. Might be Zephaniah one actually. And the more of this word you know, man, the more it's solid in everything you do. A lot of people, a lot of people, you look at them, they they know the Bible, and before you really know the book. They get to saying something and they too confident about what they what they say in the book. You want to be how do, I mean, but how do you know you got it right? Everybody say they believe the Bible, right? Everybody say they believe. But how do you know what you believe is right? That's a valid question when you don't know. Right? Anybody who don't know, they want to know how do you know? Because I don't know. That's a valid question. 
Man, once you know this thing, once you look at the book and you know you got a you got a line in the book that'll prove everything you're talking about, you know what you what you mean, I know I read it. I read the book. That's the one thing missing from all the people. You ever you ever met somebody? They be like, nah, I've been in the word my whole life. You ever met somebody that tell you that? I've been nah, I've been reading the Bible my whole life. Some of us have said that stuff. But if you think about it, really have we? Do I really know this Bible? I mean, just pop up a just test yourself. Randomly pop up a page and just read one line. And then ask yourself, do I really know what happened before and what happened after? Do I know the history of how we got to this line? Right? Give me Zephaniah. We're gonna, we just going to test ourselves real quick. This is Zephaniah chapter um, 2. Give me verse 9 because that's what came to my mind at first. And then we're going to try chapter 1. If we don't get it in those two, we'll just say it's a loss. 2 verse 9? Yeah. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall read. be as Sodom. Okay. This, this verse 10. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be like, shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of nettles in salt pits in a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Mm -hmm. This shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. What verse is that? 11. What's the last verse? 15. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly. And there is none. I am, and there is none besides me. How will she become a desolation and a place for beasts to lie down in? That's 13? Yeah. Give me, 15, uh, 15. give me, give me, what's thir what 13 say? Mm -hmm. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria. Nah, give me uh, give me chapter one, verse nine. It's Zephaniah chapter one, verse nine. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, that there shall be a noise of of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Mm -hmm. How ye inhabitants of Maktish? For all the merchant people are cut down, and all they that all they that bear silver are cut off. What's the last verse? Uh, Eighteen. Neither their silver nor gold shall be able to deliver what them in the day say? of the Lord's wrath. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day uh -huh. of wasteness and desolation, a desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like men, because they have sinned. Walk blind men, walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. And their lust blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh is the dung. So you got a poem, right? Type in just on Google. Type in Zephaniah, pure language or pure tongue. It's somewhere, right? It's right there in one of these chapters. It might, it might be earlier. I don't know why I feel like it's at the end. It's only three chapters in Zephaniah, right? I know it ain't chapter yeah. three. It can't be chapter three. Try chapter three while we wait. Verse nine. What's the last? What's the last word? It's in Zephaniah. I know it ain't. It's three crazy. nine. You're looking for it's three, three nine. nine. It is three. Yeah. That's crazy. It's three. Yeah. How oh, it's gonna be three? Yeah, it's right too. That thing in there. I'm the one that's wrong. All right. It's Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> you strike it out today. <laughs> I thought that thing was two for sure. I thought for sure I was in there. It ain't three. I'm just telling myself it ain't three. Most like God looking like, boy, shut up. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's Zephaniah chapter three, verse nine. For then will I turn the people, turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So now if I believe that, right? If I believe that, there's a one assumption I have to make. When the most high God come back here, everybody ain't going to be serving them with one consent based off of their language. Right, I mean, I have to make that assumption. So if I make that assumption, and y'all walking around talking about, no, nah, to understand the Bible, you got to know the real Hebrew. One, two things I got to I gotta believe in. I got to believe you are God's promise, right? And you are teaching everybody the true Hebrew. And for that, I'm going to need you to show me some evidence of you being that promise, right? Or I got to believe that you don't know what you know I'm talking about. And I'm away for the most I got until a true Hebrew speaker come through. Uh, give me a pure language. Right? It's only one of these two things. 
I ain't trust none of these Hebrew Israelites. He'd be walking around, he's a Hebrew black man, Hebrew this, that, and that. That's cool, yeah, black man, Hebrew. That's all that. You obey what the man teach you, though? No, nah, they still smoking weeds, cussing, drinking, all these different things. No, I'm going to follow that. Right. I can't do it. The most, see, we, we make a lot of this stuff way harder than what it is. The most I give us something real clear. You want a man, a woman that follows the word. That's what he gave us to make it clear for us. Because everything else, you mess around and be like, man, it sounds good. This, that, another. The devil, it's a few things the devil can copy. He can copy. Like, we almost, we almost bought a house the other day, right? He can copy that. Right? Like, if we put our trust in that, we'd be like, listen. If God want us to have this house, if God love us, he would let us have this house. The devil could look at that and be like, that's all they think it take? Boom! That's your house. At that point, now we looking at, we already set ourselves up with a false premise that this house means God love us. So now the next thing we want means God love us. Now the next thing we want means God love us. Now the next thing that we want, if we don't get it, God don't love us, which puts us back somewhere else, then we can say God love us again. The devil got us at that point. He can copy that, right? So, I mean, sometimes let's, let's take it away from that material. Let's say something beautiful that everybody, everybody love. Kids. I was going to say kids. Kid, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't mess with nobody, kid. God, kid. God gave me this baby. Right? If God loved me, he wouldn't take this baby away from me. Brand baby sick. You know what I'm saying? We hate God for big. Baby just die, though. Right? Baby just go. Right? We look at it. God don't love me. Well, God ain't real. God ain't real. Right? Long as the baby live? No, I know God loved me because he gave me my chill. Don't people say that type of stuff? I know God loved me. Why? Because he woke me up this morning. Right? He gave me my kids, my family, and they think they name it like noble stuff. But at the same time, when in the book did it say he can't copy that? When he came after Job, what'd he take? His family. He took everything, including the kids. What do what makes you think the, the devil can't touch that stuff? He can touch all that. That's all him. Only thing he can't touch is you if God said he don't. But you have to look at. You human just like the kids human. Job was human just like the kids. He touched them kids. So God can get a go on every one of y'all. So we have to look at it and we have to say, you know what? The devil can copy all this stuff. He can set stuff up. Everything that God gave him the authority to do, he can set that thing up. One thing he ain't going to copy. It ain't in his interest. Don't make sense for him. He ain't going to copy somebody obeying the word. He ain't going to say, you know what? To trick them, I'm going to make them do exactly what God told them to do. That, it just don't make sense. That'll never happen. You'll never see that happen. Anything the devil going, he can trick you with everything else, but it's always going to be to get you away from the word. So you know the one thing we can follow and trust? Somebody who obeys the Most High God's word. Somebody who teaches and preaches the Most High God's word as it's written. No voodoo, no extra stuff, no, no, you know what I'm saying, no, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and I look, I went to, I went to, uh, I finally went to, uh, What's it called? Best Miko? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right next door to one of them churches. I can hear that pastor breathing and huffing and puss- puffing all the way through the wall. I was like, man, I better go. I almost want to go on in there and see what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? But that's what they do. They say, oh, and you, ah, ah, ah. And then they ask for some money. Right? Ask for a little bit of money. Right? And then the whole time, what they teach? They don't. All right. Let's talk about it. They open up the book. Right? They start off with the nice, humble. Uh, today, uh, we're going to look into Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah. <laughs> and it's important that. Yeah, they always think. You know they don't talk like that. Why are you talking like that on stage? That thing killed me. I'll be like, I don't get it. It's all a performance to me. Which, I mean, it's cool if you're teaching the truth. If you're teaching the truth, perform. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But it's like, teach me something if you're going to do it. The book of Zephaniah. Seek ye the Lord. Let me tell y'all, brothers and sisters. See, you have to seek the Lord. A lot of y'all not seeking the Lord. See, a lot of y'all, y'all look for the Lord. They always play some cement. Y'all look for the Lord. And, and y'all have your eyes open towards the Lord. But you're not seeking the Lord. The Lord is not being suck by you. It's like suck ain't even a word when you're using that tense. But they keep doing it and they go through and they go through and they
when they go through, and then you find yourself, you look, and it's like been 30 minutes, and he ain't pulled move past seat ye the Lord. Then he come back and he read the next part of it. Get all quiet again. All ye meek of the earth. Now I heard somebody in here is meek today. If you meek, say, turn to your neighbor and say amen. If you meek, amen. you gotta be meek. Right? And then you do that, and it's like, okay. So now we three hours in, and you are still on the same verse. What have you taught me about the Bible? Like, I'm not saying, these people, teach, they're wise people. Like, these, these pastors, why? Don't make no mistake. They're wise. They know what they're saying. They even say some stuff that's beneficial. I've been to church. I've gone to church my whole life. So a lot of stuff, it ain't no job. I sat there, and I really felt something, and I, and I really got stuff out of it. But was it the Bible, though? Right? Was it like, did I get out of it that God said this, and this is what he expects from my life? Or did I get out of it some kind of life advice, some perspective, some things I can look? Is it any different from a TED Talk? Right? At the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, is what I just heard at church different from a TED Talk? Could I have gotten that from Oprah? Right? Oprah had a good speech. She had a good speech at the, what, what was it? Golden Globes. Golden Globes. She had a good speech. I ain't hear it, but a lot, a lot of people, but that, if you, if you look and ask people how that speech made them feel, right? A person that don't go to church. And then ask a person who go to church, how did the pastor make them feel? They'll have, man, it gave me chills down my spine. Man, she was talking to me. It'll be the same type of feeling. We have to say, what is it about the word that separates from the world, right? We, have, we, we know all this stuff can go on. Is what's happening in the church separating from the world? I would say no, right? So it's important for us to say, how do we skip past all that and then get back to the word? Let's throw all of that out. Let's get back to the word. Let's get to the point where we can look at it and we can trust it. And it can get uncomfortable because we've been taught some stuff. But it's going to get uncomfortable. We go like, that can't be what it means. Then you ask yourself, why can't it be what it means? Why it can't mean exactly what it say? Because I've been taught something else or because literally it can't be? Once you get past all that, man, it's, you know how confident you are in this book. You can just walk. You know what I'm saying? It's just walk. Ain't nobody said what they gonna tell you. Oh, the only person that once you once you walk according to the word, only person can tell you what they like and what they don't like. They can't tell you nothing that's true. They tell you something that's true, you're gonna be with it. Or if they tell you something that's true, that's going that's right up your alley. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Right? Only thing they can tell you is I don't like what you're doing right now. I don't like how you act. I don't like how you speak. I don't like how you are. I don't like that you how you make me feel. That's your whole life is going to be what people like and what they don't like. I guarantee it won't be about no truth, though. That thing is a different feeling. You have a different confidence that God will give you because you trust him. Give me what we what, what we was looking for. Zephaniah gave us a pure language. We was at uh, John chapter 6, verse 44. But before we want that, grab, uh, grab John chapter, uh, give me 1 John chapter 3. This 1 John chapter 3. I think I want verse 21. Didn't right. even write nothing. Like, yeah. Because uh, you're everywhere right now. I remember what I called them. We did Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. Now we're doing 1 John chapter 3, verse 21, I think. Then after that, we're going to go to John chapter 6, verse 44. All right. As soon as he has some good, uh, what's it called? Pitmanship? We're going to turn him to the professional writer. You know what I'm talking about? Word. Yeah, yeah. You sleep? Not all you do is sleep. I ain't never seen anybody sleep more than now. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> all right, 321. Yeah, sleep on a bed of rocks. You know what I'm saying? Mama right there. <sighs> <laughs> this is, uh, is that what I want? Uh, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, that's what I want. Confidence. Okay. Yep, this is, uh, this is, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 21. Watch what he said. 
Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Because we do what? Because we keep his commandments. So what's giving us the confidence then? Keeping his commandments. When have we been taught this stuff? In this New Testament, ain't it? They tried to, you say, you walk into one of your churches talking about some commandments. They kicked your butt up. That's legalism. This, this, this New Testament tells us about commandments. And this is the key. Like these, these are the these are the keys, though. You know what I'm saying? This is the this is the thing that unlocks the whole understanding of the book. Commandments. And this is the very part that's like taboo. And it's like, hmm, why is this? Why have it, why has this been kept from me my entire life? Why have I felt guilty about trying to be too righteous? Right? We've all had that feeling. It's like, man, I really. I really just want to get it together. I'm tired of sitting. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of coming to, I'm tired of going throughout the week, feeling this way. And then on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing something different. Now, on Sunday, I, I got to come in here and feel guilty. Or I really feel it on Sunday. And then come Tuesday, I'm just like back to my old life. And it's like, I feel guilty again. I go into church. And I got to ask for I'm tired of playing this same old game. We've all felt like that. Then we go to somebody and we tell them, we like, yo, you know what I'm saying? That's how I'm feeling. And they make us feel better about being exactly how we are. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, nah, I really don't want to sin no more. No, nah, no, nah, it's impossible to stop sinning. Now, everybody, now, every, everybody going to sin. You just, you just got to make sure that you try and this, that, and other. And it's like, all right. All right, because it feel good. It's like, okay, it make you feel better. But it's just something that never touched us. Right? That's why a lot of us watch in. That's why a lot of us here. Because it's something that never really quite, like, eh. There's something missing. This is the missing piece. He just told you. I want you to read it again because I don't want to make up nothing. I, what I heard, though, is he said, if your heart don't condemn you, you'll mess around and have some confidence. Whatever you ask for, most I got to give you. Why? Because you keep his commandments. Read it one more time make sure I ain't lying. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, I appreciate the Lord. Keep going. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahushua the Messiah, and love one another as he gave us commandment. That's two commandments. Believe on, on, on the son, right? And then love one another as he gave us commandment, right? Keep going. And he that keeps his commandments dwells in him. And he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many who? False prophets. So if many false prophets went out into the world at that point, what time period would you say that is? Like maybe 30, uh, maybe 40 AD, maybe even a little later, maybe maybe 50 AD, yeah. right? So many false prophets, let's say 50, I mean, we just guessing, we don't really know for sure. But let's just say 50 AD, many false prophets went out. What do you think we're working with now? <laughs> I mean, what do you think? I mean, let's say, let's just, what, what do you think the population was then compared to now? You think it's more people now? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You think people, people probably multiplied by then? So if people multiply, maybe a false prophet or two multiply too? Hey, bro, this world is full of false prophets. All these people out here lying. Anybody who in the church and they call themselves an apostle, that thing ain't a lie, right? And we got we full any a church if they go out and build a church, right? If they go out and build like multiple churches, guess what they gonna call themselves an apostle, right? That that's how they look at it. Where'd that come from? Did that come from the book? Can you find anything in the book that says that? No, it's all tradition. Everything that we learn it has been tradition because it comes from a false prophet and they teach unsuspecting people this stuff. And then they don't know no better. They, that's what we've all been taught. What are we supposed to believe? If my pastor is teaching me this, I trust my pastor. My pastor is giving me good advice. I was broke one day. My pastor wrote me a check, kept my lights on. It's a good man. I'm supposed to look at him and be like, no, you lying. You ain't, a, you ain't no apostle. No, I'm going to look at him and be like, I don't know no better. You apostle. Right? And he got taught that same way. He was once a young boy looking at his pastor and was like, uh, he was broke. Pastor helped him, taught him everything he know, rose him up, said, here, get behind this podium. I trust you to lead my congregation. And he did it, and now he follows everything that pastor does. And the other pastor learned it from somebody else. So you go back, and we've all been somewhat victims. The only thing that the Most High God going to hold against us, though, is why didn't you take it upon yourself to figure out exactly what the truth is? 
Why did you just continue to follow? You got access to the book. It ain't no excuse. It ain't like any of us going to be like, oh, no, he taught me that. That ain't going to work. We have to all be out there and be accountable for ourselves. Right? So that's what we try to do. We try to get up in here and we try to understand. That takes us all the way back to John chapter 6, and I promise we're going to hit the road from here. It's John chapter 6, verse 44. John chapter 6, verse 44. Then we'll get into some law. It's important that we know this stuff, though. Uh, it, once, you, once you understand that, it's two videos we put in, the two little short videos we put in together. There's one, one for, like we discussed the name, right, the name of Yahushua, how did it end up from Yahushua to Jesus, just so people understand. Because a lot of time you hear, it's weird, right? We, we used to Jesus and, and God, so people start saying Yahuwah. People start saying Yahushua. It's like, what religion y'all in? Y'all, y'all Muslim or something? You know what I'm saying? Because you don't, you don't really know, right? And it's all because, of, it's just because, no, but who's taught us? Like, who's going to stand up and teach our people? Right? Who's going to teach us where we come from? You got, I used to talk to my mom, you like, mom, I'm looking up this stuff. And I'm telling you, I think, I think we Hebrew. My mom used to, she used to, I mean, with all confidence, no, I'm a Gentile. I just, like, I mean, I used to be like, all right, because I, I backed off, like, all right, you know what I'm I was just looking at some stuff, this, that, and other. I keep looking into it. And I was like, what makes us? Like, be so proud to be a Gentile. You know what I'm saying? Like, what makes us like, you know what I'm saying? It's, if it, like, out of any people in the world, we the ones who don't know where we come from. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if I tell you we Hebrew and you don't believe it, right? All right, that's fine. If I tell you we Gentile, why do you believe it? None, none of us know where we come from. None of us can just like, just wake up and be like, all right, so what African country you came from? Right, I know I'm a slave, but there's another slave. But what, what country did you, where did you get picked up from? Who's your ancestor? None of us know, right? What was your culture? What was your religion? What, none of us know, right? So if I tell you, you a Gentile, how are you going to prove it? But you rock, why then? Why then Why then did we rock with that? Why did somebody give us that and then we are like, all right, all right, that's cool. Yeah, Gentile, sounds about right. But we don't rock with anything else. I say prove it all. Prove I'm a Gentile. Prove I'm a Hebrew. Prove anything. Whatever it is, prove it. You're going to call me it, prove it. Pro- prove I'm African American. Prove I'm black. Prove it. Whatever it is, prove it. Just prove it to me. If you can't prove it, I'm going to tell you what I can prove. I'll prove to every one of y'all I'm a Hebrew. I'll trace that thing all the way back. I'll tell you the boat that brought us over. Right? They got, they got records. A lot of people, they ain't going to tell you. They got records of all that stuff. They got records right now on the website. It's called, eh, you might have to search it. It's transatlantic slave records or something like that dot com or something like that. I don't know if it's dot com, but it's transatlantic slave records. It'll tell you the names. It'll tell you the ships. It'll tell you the year that they came over. All that stuff is recorded because all these white folks, they had to keep a ledger of the money that they is making off of this stuff. They had to keep it on. This is what their name was. We changed his name to this. They had to keep track of that stuff because they, they was the business. You can't just, how you going to not have a receipt? That's crazy. They making money. They paying taxes. Right? All that stuff is recorded. And people dig that stuff up and they put that thing online. And I bless God for them. I bless God for them. Right? Because then you can go to it and you look at all the names and be like, Ben Yah, Adonai Yah, Yahoo, Yah. And then you look at all these names got Yah in it. Well, let's look in our Bible. What we got? Jeremiah Yah, Isaiah Yah. All these names got Yah in it. Same thing. They spell a little different. But you look at them, it's the exact same because those are our people, right? The evidence is just all out the, it's out the door. We can talk all night, right? But you look at it and you say, I got all this evidence, but y'all not rocking with me on, on the Gentile piece. Of it. I mean, I, y'all want me to rock on the Gentile, and nobody can prove that to me. You can't tell me where I came from, and we'll admit that. It's just that we have to change the way we think about all this stuff. And then once we do that, then we can open up our people. We can go to the people and be like, okay, listen. Right? This is how the Bible should be presented to us. This is what hasn't been told to us. This is how we live. This is what's right. This is why things haven't worked for us in this country. This is why we, 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 can't, we feel like we can't succeed. This is why we have trouble speaking this language. Right? All these different things. This is why the slaves came over talking about kumbaya. Right? Kumbaya. What do you think? Do you think these white folks just... Got in a circle and started singing kumbaya. What is, ask them what it means. Ask them what kumbaya means. 
They ain't never be able to tell you, oh, well, you know, in the French. And then you say, oh, yeah, stop that line. You ain't cut that out. Ain't no French. You ain't even speak French. You ain't never even been in France. You ain't never know no French. Go to France right now. You ain't never going to hear nobody say Kumbaya. That's African. And not just African. It's Hebrew. All right? But we as in Africa. All these different things. It's important for us. We got to. We, it's, it's important for us. We have to reestablish confidence in our people. We just don't have no confidence. We didn't. We didn't came up with all types of movements. Dr. King come up. We Christian. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X, same time, half but Muslims. Right? Both of those got shot down, literally. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not a pun on that. Literally, they got shot down. But I'm talking about the, the ideologies got shot down. Christianity got all types of holes poked in it from these atheists. All right? The black Muslims are like, man, what the black Muslims? You, y'all can't trace y'all stuff back to the Muslims that's living today. And they don't even rock with y'all. Right, and so everything, everything we look at is we're afraid to latch on to it because it's like, man, every time it seems like we really got some, we find out that things a lie. So now y'all talking about the original Hebrews was Israelites. So here the black people go again trying to latch on to something, and that's how I feel for us. So we just we don't have that confidence. Like, mm, nah, I'm a Gentile. I'm just gonna stay off of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna leave that thing alone. You ain't about to get me. You ain't about to get me to fall on that thing. Be the next Dr. King, right? I'm just not gonna do it, right? But we just have to have a confidence. We ain't got to be out there bragging and, and braggadocious about it. Just look at the history. Prove it out. Don't tell these people nothing. Let them tell you who they are. You bring out the evidence, these Jews are admitted to you. Yeah. Y'all hear about Trump? Trump, he said, so I think maybe three, four weeks ago, he told, he told, um, he told them people that, uh, that Jerusalem is now the capital of, of, uh, of Israel. All right? So for a long time, because you got Palestinians there, the Arabs, and you have you have the, the Jewish people there, right? The white Jewish people. You got both of them there. So they've been fighting over certain parts of the land. The Palestinians got what's called the Dome of the Rock. This is a big one. It's like the third greatest Muslim site. And it's built right in Jerusalem, supposedly exactly on, on the Temple Mount where our temple once was. That's what they say, at least. Right? They say our temple used to be there. And so the Dome of the Rock is right there. Right, so the Jewish people, they like we don't like that. We want God's God's temple to be there. All right, so it's been like a fight. So that is all in Jerusalem, and for a long time, nobody really wanted to come out and just say Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, because by saying that, you basically are saying Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people, and therefore it does not belong to the Palestinians. But the Palestinians' third holiest site is right there on that land. So to them, that means one day that thing going to be torn down. Y'all going to try to come after it. So everybody been kind of on the fence about it. Nobody wanted to just come out and say it. But Trump came out. He was like, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Done deal. Leave me alone about it. Let's move. So when Trump did that, everybody outraged. Guess what the Muslim did? A group of Muslims came up. They wrote a letter. They did. They were very clear in the letter. They were like, look, let me explain to y'all. This happened. This happened a couple weeks ago. Let me be very clear to y'all. We know that y'all ain't the real Israelites because the real Israelites are black and brown. Said that flat out. This happened a couple days ago. All right, a couple weeks ago. Right? Years ago, maybe 50, 40, 50, 60, 70 now, maybe 70, 80 years ago, you had a president in Egypt that said the exact same thing. He said there will never be peace between Israel and their Arab nations because when the Israelites left, they were black. But when they came back, they were white, right? So these type of things are never going to really circulate, right? But it's problems right now. And the more pressure that get put on the, the Arabs, the Arabs know. All the research I did, I had to go and, and translate. I had to get somebody to translate or find translated versions of Arab texts. The Arabs know this stuff. They know all about us. But that's why people can't find it because it's in, it's in Arabic. You know what I'm saying? So you look at these Arab texts, you like, oh, there it is right there. You know what I'm saying? There it is right there. Oh, there it is again. There it is right there. Israelites. And you talk about all this history in Africa, and they all talking about, oh, Israelites are here. Yeah, the Jews were here. And all these different things. The black Jews. The, this Jew skin was as black as they're describing our people. And the Jews, they were as black as, 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 as pitch on the ground and all this stuff. So I'm looking like, this all just flat out here. I can just search on Google, and it take a long time. You got to know what you're searching for. But I can get all this stuff. That's crazy. So we'll get there. It's going to open up. Slowly but surely, all this stuff will open back up. And then we'll build that confidence with the information in there. And then maybe we'll get somebody cool like Kendrick Lamar to say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. I'm going to tell you. You get somebody like Kendrick Lamar. 
You know what I'm saying? With Kendrick Lamar, he got that song. He's, he's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, DNA, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about us being Hebrew. And then he got another song called, uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't black no more. I'm an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? That's the, then, you know what I'm saying? They get a little bit more attention. So now, from doing that, you probably got a thousand more Israelites that, you know what I'm saying? Did. I mean, all we need now is Jay Z or something. You know what I'm saying? You need to either a white person say it. A famous white person? Yeah. Oh, that right. thing done it. Now. <laughs> that thing. Then it's pop it. That thing. Then everybody, I'm like, I don't even want to be an Israelite no more. You know what I'm saying? That thing going to be pop it. That all white people Israelite. We Israelite too. You know what I'm saying? I got 2% black in me. You know what That thing going to be real after that. You know, that's what that's what's gonna happen. You know, what I'm saying you just gotta wait for it. This is the uh, this is John chapter four, uh, six verse forty four. We gonna read. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So looking at what we read, literally, it means how do you come to the Father? You gotta come to the Son. You gotta be drawn. You gotta be drawn, right? I mean, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. How do you come to the Son? You gotta be drawn. You gotta be drawn by who? The Father. Right? So, I mean, when you look at the word like that, you can just set it up. You can draw it. How do you get there? Right? You get there, got to be drawn by Father. Who can save us? Son. Right? So, that means I got to get to the Son. How do I get to the Son? Father has to draw me. All right? I can't get here unless He decides to pull me over here. All right? How do I get Him to pull me over? Let's read the next verse. It is written in the prophets. It's written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God. They shall be all taught of God. Every, therefore. Every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. So the way that you come unto me. In this sentence me is Yahushua. Right? So the Messiah. You get to the Messiah. By hearing and what? Hearing and learning. Right? So he said everyone who has heard and learned of who? The Father. Comes to me. So now we have two truths. We have. You have the Father has to draw me to get to the Yahushua, to get to the Messiah, right? And then the second truth is I have to hear and learn of the Father to get to the Son, right? So what's drawing then? If we have those two things laying on top of each other, drawing and hearing and learning are the same thing. You're drawn to the Son by hearing and learning of the Father. If we hear and we learn the word, faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. You hear and learn of the Father? Guess what? You got faith. Whole book telling us it. Like it's, the whole book is telling us the same thing, right? The same thing over and over. It's just that we haven't been taught to interpret it the way it is. We've been taught to interpret it to fit what makes us feel good or what makes our pastor feel good or how our pastor was taught it or whatever. But if you look at it and just say, can I show consistency with this idea, Right? Can I lay verse on top of verse and they all say the same thing? And does it all make sense? Once you do that, man, it's like you're just walking through open doors. It's like, man, what's good? This thing feel good to you. We want to learn. We want to get to the Father. We hear and we learn the word. Not just the New Testament. Not just the Old Testament. Not just the Psalms and, you know what I'm saying, the Proverbs and all that. The whole book. Let's start from the beginning. What we do? Last two, three years, what we do? Start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. We went from... Genesis, verse by verse, practically, and then went all the way to uh, Revelations. We just ended that in, what was that, maybe September, October, maybe? Yeah. October. We did that, and we was like, huh, what are we going to do now? Mm, let's go back to Genesis, right? Now we're on Exodus, right? So that's all we do, year after year, year after year. We just want to start, and we want to cover the entire book because there's so much to learn. How are we going to say, okay, we did it a couple times, right? We read through the Bible a couple times together. Right, as a Bible study group. People watching it online, they read through all this stuff with us. But what are we gonna say? We know too much, we good, let's do something else now. That's crazy. Let's read it again. We might have missed something. That's the rest of our life. Peter told us add and add and add and add. And else, or else what you gonna end up doing? Forgive. This is uh grab uh If you keep this in memory, what is that? First Corinthians 15? Mm, I don't know. We don't need it. But I want to say First Corinthians 15 to tell you uh, you are saved under one condition. They don't say condition, but it says if. And we know if is a conditional statement. So it says you are saved if you keep this in memory. Only way you're going, only way you're going to be saved is if you keep the word in memory. Not saying that you have to remember verse by verse exactly how it's written, but you have to remember the message. 
you have to remember the, the 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 simplicity of what it says is true, and I have to do what it says. That's important for us, and we have to know it. We have to be familiar with what the word is telling us. So over the last few weeks, what we've been doing is we've been looking at um, the law, right? We've been looking at Moses. We've been looking at what he does. We've been looking at um, what he does, what he what he what he represents. We've been looking at him bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt and bringing them into the wilderness. Right. So the time frame that we've been looking at right now is about. Um, well, right now it's a little longer, but we were we are about three months into the wilderness and we got to Mount Sinai. So we crossed the Red Sea, did all that fun stuff. Then we got to Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where the Most High God spoke to us from the mountain, right? He spoke to us. He, 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 he said 10 words or 10 commandments, right? So 10 commandments, spoke to us. When he is about to get to that 11, we said, eh, hold on, right? Because you have to imagine this whole time, Moses has been talking to God, right? If God got something to say, Moses come, he's like, hey, this is what God said. And at first we was like, eh, we don't really rock with you, Moses. We don't know what you're talking about, how we know that's God. Then Moses started turning water into blood. You know what I'm saying? Moses started, Moses started, uh, Moses started putting his, his staff down, turning into a snake. Moses even turned his hand white. You know what I'm saying? Moses was a black man. He put it in his bosom. He pulled his hand out and it's white. We were like, all right. After that, after we saw that, we were like, all right. All right. I ain't never seen my, all right. We rocking with you. What do you got to say? So after that, we were like, okay, Moses, we rock with you. So we rock with Moses. Moses put all these plagues on the people. We looking at it, Moses is doing this stuff, right? Moses put all these plagues on the people. Then Moses opened up the sea and we walked. The whole time he telling us God is doing it. We've never talked to God. All we've seen is all these miracles that Moses is doing. Now all of a sudden Moses said, come up to this mountain. Three months in, we've been rocking with Moses for three months. Three months in, he said, come to this mountain. God is going to talk to y'all. So we was like, yeah, man, you've been getting all the talk from God. I want to hear him too. God started talking though. It was loud, thundering, uh, fire. fire coming off of the top. You know what I'm saying? It looked like it was about to explode, a whole bunch lightning, of smoke, smoke, lightning, all that, right? Earthquake. He spoke. Everybody, it felt like everything is about to blow up, right? So then by the time he got to that 10th one, we, we had enough. We stopped him after that. We said, whoa, 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 Moses. You go up there and talk to God. Basically, let's do it how we've been doing it this whole time. You talk to him, you give us the message, right? So then they went up. Or, or, or Moses, not they. Moses went up. He told to talk to the Most High God. He got all the commandments. Came back down, gave us the commandments, and then sealed us into the covenant. So that's what we've been taught about the old covenant, new covenant in church. That's where that comes from. That's true, right? You have the old covenant, and that's what that was established with Moses, right? So Moses set that up. After he talked to us, he went back up there forty days, forty nights. Remember though, he went back up into smoke, fire. What we just thought was about to kill us. Right? That's where Moses just walked his happy butt right on in there, and then he gone. He didn't tell us, hey, I'll be gone for 40 days, 40 nights, just wait for me. He just walked back in there. So we like, day 10, no sign of Moses. You know what I'm saying? That thing's still scary, and Moses haven't come down. Day 20, y'all heard from Moses? Moses ain't came? No, Moses ain't came back. Day 30, you still ain't heard from Moses? Man, I don't know what's happening to Moses now. Then we get to day 40. We like, Looked at Moses' brother. You know what I'm saying? Moses' brother was doing most of the talking for Moses. His name was Aaron. We looked at him. We was like, look, Aaron, we don't know what happened to Moses. Therefore, make us a God. Remember, we saw Moses as God. He was our image of God. So we was like, make us a God. You know what I'm saying? Make us a God so that we'll know who brought us up out of Egypt. So Aaron was like, mm -hmm. give me your earrings. So he melted down everybody's earrings. He made a golden calf out of it. And he said, this is your God. All right? He made a golden calf. Then after that, God was like, you know what, Moses? I'm about to kill these people. You might want to get down there. Because they didn't turn from the way of what I just told them. I just gave you commandments. You just told them the commandments. We just signed the covenant. And they doing exactly what I just told them not to do. They made an image. They wasn't supposed to make an image. So Moses had to run down there. Moses didn't, you know what I'm saying? Moses was like, yeah, take it easy on them at first. By the time Moses get out there and see it for himself, he broke the Ten Commandments that God made. You know what I'm saying? He grinded up that thing, poured it in the water. He made them, he made them drink the water with the gold that's grinded up in it. He, he made them drink it after that. Then he told, he told, uh, he, he asked, he said, who out here is for God? Who's on God's side? Right? The only people that chose up was his brother. And he's a Levite. All right? So we had 12 tribes, or we had 12 brothers from, from uh, Jacob, our father. You know what I'm saying? And so he was a Levite. 
And so only the Levites came out. He told the Levites, grab your swords, kill them all. Right? Kill them. Anyone, your brother, your companion, your friends, whoever, kill them. This is God's judgment. So he go, they, they go out there, about 3,000 people got, got punished that day. Right? Then after that, um, he, uh, he prayed for them and everything. And uh, he got them back to a place where they, they, would, they would at least be somewhat acceptable for God. All right, but Moses tried to put himself out there like, you know what I'm saying, take me instead of them. God was like, no, I'm going to take the sinners. Don't worry about it. I'm going to just take the sinners. All right? So at this point, we're dealing with kind of the aftermath of that. That part is kind of soared up a little bit. But now we're dealing with Moses kind of get, trying to get everybody back to the regular schedule program. Because remember, he went to talk to God after the Ten Commandments. He went to get the rest of the commandments. Came back down, gave us the commandments. Then he went back up to get another message. He, he was spending 40 days, 40 nights with God and got a lot of information at that point, but he never gave that information to the children. So now he's coming back down. He's like, okay, can I finally get all this, all this good knowledge I got from God? Can I finally share this with y'all? So that's where we at right now. So this is Exodus chapter 35. Let's try to shoot through it. This is Exodus chapter 35. Give me verse 1. And Moses gathered all the congregation to the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which, which the Lord has commanded, that ye should do, that ye should do them. Mm -hmm. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall, be, there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever does work therein shall be put to death. All right, so again, you see he mentioned in the Sabbath, right? If we just counted it so far, I think we got like four or five mentions of the Sabbath. Right? He gave us commandments and he mentioned the Sabbath almost every time he talked about something, he mentioned the Sabbath. The reason why that's important is look at any other commandment that he's given us so far and see if he's repeated any of them like that. The Sabbath means something. Right? We've been taught that it's just like, oh, Sunday is the Sabbath and all that. But we, it means something. It obviously means something. The guy was important to him. When we look in the, in the Old Testament, we look in, in the law. We're able to get the character of God. We're able to know, like, this is what God appreciates. This is who God is. The New Testament kind of gives us a snapshot with the assumption that y'all already know this, right? Y'all already know God. Y'all have all this information. Y'all can do a catch-up and a study of who God is. Let me just tell y'all the snapshot of what y'all need to know on top of that. But if you don't really know all that, then you would just take the snapshot and think the snapshot is everything. What God is trying to say is, this is who I am. This is what I expect. This is, who I, this is what I do. And then take what the New Testament is saying and add it on to that. And that's what we try to do. Now we can get his character. Now we can see how strict is he. What is he? What is he? What is his thing? You know what I'm saying? What makes him tick? What is he looking for from us? What does he appreciate from us? All right. What type of servitude is this man like? All right. And then we can get to know him. Just to get to know, part of our get to know him, he mentioned the Sabbath a whole lot. Let's keep that in mind as we go to the New Testament. Keep going. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass, mm -hmm. and blue and purple, and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins and shittim wood, and oil for the light. And spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for an ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that all that the Lord has commanded. All right, so he's, he told them uh, a little bit before this, he told them a whole lot of different artifacts. Y'all still got them up here? He gave, them, he gave them a whole lot of artifacts. This is one of them. He said, for the priests, I want y'all to make this, right? And this is just sketches, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be exactly what what the Bible is describing. But the Bible is describing the look of all of these different artifacts. Right? This is how it's made. These are the dimensions. Right? These, this is the shape of it. This is how all of this stuff look. And so he's giving them the details of it. Basically the blueprint to make all of these different things. Right? And now he's telling them, okay, now that I told y'all how to make this stuff, this is what we need to make it. Right? We need some people to bring to us some wool. We need some people to bring to us some gold. 
we need people to bring to us some dye, some pearls, all these different things. He ain't say no pearl, but you know what I'm saying? All these different things. He said, go ahead and bring all this stuff to us. He said, find the people who will make the offering willing. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. And every wise heart, oh wait. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tatches, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets. The ark and the staves thereof with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering. Go ahead and skip on down to verse, uh, what on, verse 17 maybe? The hangings of the court, his pillars in their sockets, and the hanging of the door in the court, the pins in the tabernacle, and the pins of the court in their cords, the clothes of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron and the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Mm -hmm. And they came, every one whose heart stirred him up. He, said, he said they came, every one whose what? Heart stirred him up. So that means they own heart stirred them up. Right? Keep going. And everyone whom his spirit made willing, uh -huh. and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. So now, listen listen to the order of how things happen, right? Moses taught them all this stuff, right? They heard it, and they learned all this stuff. Then after that, what happened to their heart? They got stirred up, right? And then they just willingly brought all this stuff. It's like, you know what? I got exactly what y'all need here. Right? After they learned and they taught, they got this. just like, man, I just want to do this thing. It sounds like the father drew them to Moses. Right? Moses brought the first covenant. Yahushua brought the second covenant. Who do you think Moses represent? Yahushua. He was Yahushua to them. Right? Who is Yahushua to us? Is he just a man or God? God. When they when Moses was walking around doing all these miracles, who they think when Moses disappeared and they didn't know where he went, first thing they said is, make us a God. Why didn't they say that when Moses was there? Because they didn't need it. They thought they were looking at him. They thought they thought the man was God. They, as far as they're concerned, that's him. Right? Same thing with um, same thing with Yahushua. When Yahushua walk around, what we look at? That's God. That's the image of the most high God. Book tell you that. This is the image, the express image of God. Who's going to say he ain't God? He'll slap you in the darn mouth if he wanted to. That's God. What are you going to do? If, if, if God slap you in the mouth, what are you going to do? <laughs> what God? With, 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 uh, with uh, y'all laughing, but grab uh, Numbers chapter 12. It's Numbers chapter 12, verse, uh, verse, uh, goodness, what I want. Verse, uh, Eight, maybe? Uh, is that what I want? You're talking about Marion? Yeah. That is... It's chapter 12. I thought that was like... It's not 12? I don't know. I thought it was... If late. it ain't 12, it's 20. No, it's not 20. That's when Moses got in trouble. It's 12 then. It ain't 15. What do you think? You might be right. I've been off today, obviously. No, no, it's 12. Is it? Yeah. What verse? I don't need the whole thing. Just get, jump down towards the bottom. Yeah. 14. 14. So this is, this is Numbers chapter 12, verse 14. Watch it. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she... No, no, no. Give me, give me, uh, give me 12. This is uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse 12. Okay. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear now, O God, I beg thee, so what just happened is Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, right? And they spoke against him like, you with that, what was it, Ethiopian or Egyptian? Egyptian. You with that Egyptian woman, right? We Hebrew. Ethiopian woman. It was Ethiopian? Ethiopian. We Hebrews, right? We look like, you mess, You need to mess with a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Mess with them weird Africans. We don't play that stuff. Still to this day, we find out we Hebrew. We be like, man, I ain't African. You know what I'm saying? You talk to some of these Hebrews, like, they be like, man, I ain't African. You know what I'm saying? Don't be confusing me with no African. Y'all Hamites. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. We, don't, we didn't play that. Even back then, we didn't play that stuff. I'm like, all right. I be telling folks I ain't African. These people ain't us. All right? We different people. What you talking about? So they're, they're just talking to Mo like, listen, your Ethiopian wife, she ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? You can do that. So Mo's like, God, he ain't looking at Mo's like, man, y'all just relax. Mo's like, God looking at 
Why did you feel comfortable talking to Moses like that? You see that I talked to the man. I ain't never, I ain't never came to y'all and had a conversation with y'all like that. Right? When I talk to y'all, I give you a dream. I give you a little prophecy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, because Miriam and, and Aaron, they were prophets too. But it's like, I, when, I, when I give y'all something, it's like, it's a little coded. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get a little dream and you have to make something of it. You know what I'm saying? I talk to Moses. I'm like, hey, what up, Moses? You know what I'm saying? What's good, man? Let me tell you what I did yesterday. He said he talked to Moses like a friend. The book said that. He talked to Moses like a friend, face to face. Right? He said, he said, when I talk to Moses, I don't talk to him like I talk to y'all. So why did y'all feel like y'all could just run up on Moses and tell him what he doing wrong? Like, what about what Moses did that y'all hear from me was wrong? Where you just felt comfortable with you could just run it, run your mouth against him. So after that, he gave Miriam leprosy. Right? People were like, well, why he didn't do nothing to Aaron? Right? What you don't realize, he couldn't give Aaron leprosy. Why? Because he's a priest. Well, Aaron, Aaron was a priest. Who, if he defiled, then everybody defiled. And people ain't got no hope. He didn't do it to spare Aaron. He did it to spare us. <laughs> All our people out there. What happened to Aaron? As soon as Aaron wasn't needed, he put his son in place. What happened? He died. You get your butt out of here. Aaron was dead after that. Like, ah, right, you serve your purpose. Good. Yeah, this is God. Like, this is God's care. This is how he deal with us. He'll let you. He'll let you. Once you like, once you see that, then it changes how you look at your own life, right? Because it's like the man will allow me to sit here and make a complete mess of my life and think I'm getting away with it, while I'm serving the purpose of letting somebody else get saved. And as soon as that's done, I'm out of here. Like my purpose served. Like you thought you were doing something. You up in church? I mean, praising the Lord, praising the Lord, doing your thing, hypocrite and doing all that stuff. Leading the church, pastor, and you just doing your thing, and you just need to say one thing that's gonna get some people out of there because they they offended about what you said now, and that's gonna lead them to hear the truth. And as soon as that happens, your butt out of there. Now the scandal come out that you've been touching on kids, or now the scandal come out that you've been cheating on your wife, or now the scandal come out and all this stuff. You don't think that's what's happening to these people? They say their purpose. As soon as they do, most like God say, "All right, we good. I can take you down now." I didn't need these people to trust you long enough to get offended and then go here and hear something from my real servant. That's all I need. You served your purpose. Get your butt out of here. Sometimes he's setting people up for hell. Right? I just need you to catch enough people in your little net so I can send all these people to hell with you. That's how he does things. Aaron, Miriam can get it right away, which is better for her. She gets her, her rebuke right away. She learned right away. Aaron just like mostly alone. Like, all right, I'm good. Oh, God ain't tripping on me. I can just mess, keep messing up. That's a lot of that's a lot of mistakes we make. We feel like okay, nothing happened, so I can just keep messing up. We can't have that attitude because we know how God works. You know what I'm saying? We have to know. Let's do it right the first time. Let's do it right the second time. If we didn't do it the right the first time, let's not say I got as many chances as I need. Let's not say I can wait until my deathbed. That's crazy. All right, keep going. Watch this. Watch what he do to Mary. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God. Right? He said, You gave her leprosy, God. Heal her right now. Moses is her brother. They're speaking against him. God did this on his behalf. He said, Heal her now. Right? Let's see. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received again. What you gonna do? Whole point of this is, if God slapped your butt, what you gonna do? Moses, he just told Moses, he was like, so if her daddy, her dad, spit on her face, right? Just spit in her, just got mad at her and just spit on her, right? If her dad did that to her, at the very least, she would have to sit outside the camp seven days, don't you think? Wouldn't that be appropriate according to our law? According to the stuff I just taught you? Wouldn't she be unclean seven days? Okay, she got leprosy now. She'll be all right. She'll be back in seven days. Right? He said, no, I'm not healing nothing. Put her outside seven days, she'll be fine. Right? This is how God works. We have to look at these things and we have to know that the man is serious about what he's he's requiring from us. Right? Keep going. Where were we at before that? Exodus 35, 21. It's 35, 21? Exodus. Yeah, it's Exodus chapter 35, verse 21. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred them up and everyone whose his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, mm -hmm. and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tables and tablets 
all jewels of gold. Every man offered, uh, uh, every every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. This is all the material that's needed to, to build what we uh what what the Most High God was trying to give us, right? Trying to get us to build. This is all the material needed. And everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service brought it. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. When it says women that were wise hearted, it's saying that that did spin. It's just saying that they knew how to turn the wool into into the thread or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they, they spun it and it's like after they did it, it's like here. You know what I'm saying? I already did the work for you. It's already broken down. Here you go. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And spice and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Right. Excuse me. So the, the Most High God made their heart willing. Gave it to them. They start giving that stuff up. And then they, they now they had the material that they need to build what we went over previously. Right? So those pictures and all that stuff, they have the material to do it. So next week when we look at it, we're going to see that they start to actually build these things. They start to put these things together. And we're going to look at what Moses does and what's interesting about what Moses does, how that lines up with what Yahushua did and is going to do. Okay? We... It's, the, the theme pretty much that we see with Moses is so much of how he does things. It just kind of shows a representation of how Yahushua did things and how Yahushua is prophesied to do things when he comes back. Right? You can see that all of this stuff testifies of Yahushua. That's the beautiful thing about our book that separates it from anything else in the world is it doesn't have this, this parallel layering of, of stories that all kind of testify of one one single thing. They're written beforehand, some stuff even written after. And now it all just links back to one man and testifies of his whole life in many different ways. Like, hmm, you look at that, that's the same thing he did. Hmm, the Messiah did the same thing. Hmm, same thing. So you look at these things and they all line up. It's a beautiful thing. So we'll go over it. We'll start talking about that next week. Um, but for this week, any questions or anything? So... They were slaves. They come out of uh, Egypt. Now, if I read it right, didn't the Egyptians give them some of this stuff when they left? That's a good point. Grab Exodus for me. Exodus chapter uh, 12. Yeah, Exodus chapter 12. I don't know what verse. Exodus chapter 12, maybe 35. Got to be in the 30s. Mm. Got to be out there on the bread. This is Exodus chapter 12, verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And we talked about that word, borrow. It's going to say, it, keep reading, it's going to give us another word too. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And so the Egyptians that, did what? So that they lent unto them they such lent? things. Yes. So it says, borrow and then finish it out for me, sorry. They lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And they spoiled the Egyptians. So lent and borrow. What do we know is interesting about those words as they're translated here? Well, borrowed is something that you got to give back. Right? When you borrow something, that means you're supposed to give it back, right? What did we learn when we went over this previously, though? It's the same word. Those two words in Hebrew are the same word. So the translators decided, they looked at the word, at the Hebrew word, and it's like, mm, borrow should go here. And, you know, mm, lint should go here. But when you look at behind the English and just look at the Hebrew word, those are the exact same Hebrew words in each time. So borrow and lint. Then if you look at the Hebrew word and how it's translated elsewhere in the Bible, it's not tra translated as borrow and lint. It's always translated as inquired. They asked. Right? 
So in actuality, they didn't borrow anything. They asked. They went to the Egyptians and they said, can I have that? All right? Can I have this? All right? And then the, uh, the Egyptians gave it to them. They gave them their inquiry. All right? So that's, that's important because otherwise, you have a Hebrew group right now that uses this to teach people to borrow from their family members or borrow from their friends so that they can escape from today's Egypt and then actually go to Egypt. The craziest thing in the world. But they go to the where Egypt is now and they use this verse to tell them, see, when we left Egypt, this is what you do. And then you tell people to go to Egypt. It just don't make no darn sense to me. And then people buy it. But what they do is they go to their family and they borrow all this money from them, borrow with no intention of paying it back. And that's still, it's still, right? Because they think they're getting that back. You're telling them you're going to get that back. But, and they think, oh, no, we just doing what the Bible said. No, that's not what the book said, right? It says that in English. But if you could look behind it, that's not what it said, right? So this is moments where you could say, no, if you speak Hebrew, you, would, you wouldn't have that mistake. That happens in the book, all right? That's why it's important for us. If somebody tell us something, well, let's look into it, make sure it's true. But we have enough information, especially with the King James. The reason why the King James is so important is because the King James is probably the most transparent Bible. Because what it says is each word that we see in English, it attaches a Hebrew word to it, and it provides us a record where you can look it up and you can say, is this is how this, this is why this word was translated this way? These are the other ways it could be translated. This is how it was the same word was translated other times in the Bible. So you can look at it and say, has it ever been translated the way you tell me it should be? If it's so, then yeah, let's go with it. If not, then ah, uh, jury show up. Right? So, yes, they they did get something from the Egyptians, and that's how God said they would spoil them. They took that same stuff that they got, and they give it all back to God. Right? It's beautiful. That's how God worked, though. Right? He lined us all up, do all this stuff, and it's all at the end of the day. If we ever are thinking this about us, we miss the whole picture. The whole thing always going to be about him. And more importantly, it's going to be about his son. Right? The whole thing, everything we look at, everything we read, Everything, everything we look. When we talking about Moses, you'll notice I ain't talking about Moses, right? When I'm talking about Moses, I'm really talking about Yahushua. I'm talking about Moses, you know what I'm saying? God, the reason why I'm even saying that is because I'm really talking about Yahushua as God. Everything has to look, line back up to his son, all right? That's the man that died on the cross for us. That's the man that gave everything he got for us. So now that means that we have to do what? No, baby. We just got to give everything we got for him now. I mean, somebody, I mean, somebody, let's see, let's just say. You upside down on your house, right? About to go in foreclosure, right? Somebody come through and they say, I'll tell you what. You don't want to foreclose, right? I'm like, no. You still want to live in your house? Don't worry about it. I am going to buy this house right off you, but you don't have to move. You ain't got the money to do it. What you going to say? Yeah, let's do it, right? They buy that darn house. Who own that house now? If they want you to pay rent, what you going to have to do? If you just like, no, nah, man, you told me I ain't got to move. What if, if they just said, nah, you got to move. What you going to have to do? Move. If somebody bought, so this is what happened was. The wages of sin is what? Death. I mean, even a good Christian to know. We, we know this, right? They taught us that much. Wages of sin is death. They taught us we just didn't look, listen to it real good. Wages of sin is death. So if I'm saying I sin and the paycheck that comes as a result of that sin is death, that means that on Friday, I should be dead. But I'm not. So then if Yahushua said he died on the cross for our sin, of which the wages is death, that means he paid for our sin, which means he owns us because we're still living. So that means if he owns us, we have to do what he says. Because now it's his authority. Right now it's different. It's, at first it was, you know, it was my authority. I thought I owned the house. I got upside down in it. Now I owe. Now it's this man's authority. If he say I gotta pay rent, I gotta pay rent. He say I gotta move, I gotta move. Whatever it is, I gotta do whatever I gotta do to stay in this house for him. Right? That's what it all comes down to. Because now he's saying his when this, when it was before that, it was you die, you die. It was no talking. We read this whole Old Testament. You ain't, you're not going to hear nothing about hell except for prophecy of New Testament. Right? But you're not going to hear nothing about no hell, burning in fire, other than prophecy of the New Testament. And then Proverbs mentioned it. I think they mean she old. 
Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it'll say hell, but it's talking about the, the underworld. It's not going to be fire, not hell as we see it today, right? It, it's talking about the underworld in terms of the ground, um, the grave, and all that, right? You look now, that thing, kingdom or hell? How did you get it? He said, look, you do what I say, you get into the kingdom. You live forever, right? You don't do what I say, your butt burning forever. The stakes is higher on each side. Better promises. That's what the new covenant is, right? Better promises. We get to get into the kingdom, right? But the punishment is a little worse, too, because it's new, new authority, new ownership, right? So, yeah, they, they, they went ahead and they, they, they asked and got that, that stuff from the Egyptians, and that's how they had the material to give it up. It's beautiful. That's how God work. Same thing going to happen here. Yep, same thing, exact same thing. Exact same thing. We got prophecy. We'll go over it one day, but we got prophecy to tell us that when we come out of here, we're going to come out of with great substance, the book says. And it says that just as if, I mean, just as when we left Egypt is how we leave here. It's going to be a beautiful thing. He, he, he got another place to say the Gentiles are going to carry us on their backs out of this place. They're going to carry us on, 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 on swift, what is it? Beast. swift beasts is what it says. Swift beasts. So it's going to be something, maybe a Corvette. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't really know. You know what I'm saying? I just like to imagine I'm in the back of the Corvette, just like, yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? You never know, though. You never know. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. I mean, I just prefer that. You know what I'm saying? We ride the cheetah. Yeah, you know, cheetah cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I just want to, you know, I want to be in that Lamborghini. You know what I'm saying? You never know. Maybe Swift Beast, you can interpret that to mean like horsepower. Right. Yeah. No. That boy reaching now. You know what I'm saying? I'm with the Lamborghini. You riding that thing? Yeah. Let's go back, boy. You never know. I don't know how that thing gonna get across the water. But we'll figure it out. Any other questions? All right. Let's pray out. 